Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather, and if it's your first time here, let me do a quick introduction. I am a disabled veteran, I'm a single mom, and I currently live abroad in Lisbon, Portugal. I know many of my followers have been following me since my early backpacking days with my daughter through Asia and then our time in Florida, then we moved to Mexico and now we're here in Portugal. Many people have asked me to do more Portugal based videos so here's one of them for you guys. This video I'm going to cover tips and advice when you are renting or looking for rentals here in Portugal. I did a video like this before when I was living in Medina, Mexico and it really did help the community when looking for rentals. When you are coming from another country, for me, America, and you're going to a foreign country and looking for rentals, some things that we normally would not think about, you know, because it's a given in America, is not like that in other countries. So hopefully you guys are gonna take notes and hopefully this does benefit you if you're looking for rentals here in Portugal. So first things first, when you find a listing, let's just say on Idealista, there's always going to be an email address and a phone number. It's very ideal just to call that number or send them a WhatsApp message versus sending an email. Many times I have found while talking to the community that they're not getting responses from these email addresses or they receive a response several months down the road. I found that a lot of people had better responses when they called or they used the WhatsApp number that was there. A lot of people think life only exists in Lisbon, Porto, and Cascais. But there are amazing other communities, cities, villages outside of the major cities. Also, if you're looking for more bang for your buck, definitely look for areas outside of the major cities. There are some really beautiful hidden gems that you may not have heard of. Also, rent could possibly be a lot cheaper than it is city center. While you're in the process of looking for a rental, you should visit that rental during rush hour, the nighttime, and on the weekend. This is so you know how loud and hectic it can be. Are there going to be loud cars and honking of the horns? Are there going to be different parties that are going on outside because establishments have permits for noise up until 2 a.m.? And sometimes it could just be a, just a hangout spot for people like to hang out and drink. These things are important to some people, especially if you like things to be very quiet. And I do like things to be very quiet, especially when I'm having downtime or I want to get some sleep. It's good to set back-to-back -back appointments just so you can really get a feel of the appointment. Now, it doesn't have to be on the same day, but you can just pick a week just to go back and forth to that particular neighborhood. You can set back-to-back -back appointments with the agent, whoever's covering that rental, just so you can get a feel of the neighborhood at all different hours. Things to do while you're inside of a rental, while you're looking. Check the water. Ask if it's gas or electric. Ask to see the prior light bill so you know what, type, what the typical energy level or the price that they're paying is. I'm going to tell you a quick story about my experience with this. I moved into a beautiful renovated apartment. Everything was brand new. Nobody lived here. First rental since the first tenant since the renovation. And I remember talking to my friends when they first moved here about the wattage or the KVA. And they said, make sure you get at least six because anything below, you're just gonna trip the power, trip the power. So when I moved in, um, for a part of moving and I asked, hey, what is the what is the wattage? They're like, oh, it's supposed to be 6.9. That's the minimum that we wanted to give because of the appliances. So I said, cool, I love the location, love this building, everything. Come to find out, I did not have 6.9. The day I moved in, I tripped the breaker and it wasn't the breaker that's in the house, the little fuse. It's actually the one that's downstairs where all the meter boxes is. So for the first several weeks, I kept tripping the breaker, kept tripping the breaker. I had to go all the way downstairs, press the orange button, wait for to reset my apartment and then go all the way back upstairs. I went to a different electric company because I thought, okay, maybe, you know, EDP, is just not allowing it so i went to gulp and i you know signed up for the 6.9 and they actually sent me a message saying that i was not authorized to have 6.9 because like, my floor had to have like some type of test done or authorization done to have that amount of wattage so here i am now you know if you guys watch me on instagram you guys know i love to cook 
uh, and cooking has been very stressful sometimes because I can only use one burner at a time. I cannot use my stove and my oven. Um, you know, so if you like to you if you like to cook or you're planning on running the dishwasher and trying to do like multiple things at one time with appliances, definitely you need to find that out because if you have the bare minimum, which I had was 3.5 or 3.45, then it's gonna cause you some issues, especially if you have newer appliances. If the electricity is on in that particular apartment, definitely check everything, make sure everything works. Turn on the washer. If you have a washer, turn on the dishwasher. You really wanna make sure all these things are in working order before you sign your lease. I remember looking at a flat once and the entire wall was crumbling. You know, all the other rooms were fine, but that one room had crumbling in the wall. I'm not sure why they would show me an apartment where the wall was crumbling at all, but definitely check, you know, check all the rooms, check all behind the doors and everything. You know, you really wanna get a spot on view on what you're walking into or what you're planning on living in. Another important thing is check the windows, you know, definitely check for mold. Check around the windows, in the bathrooms, check the corners, anywhere that moisture could possibly get into, which is basically the windows and surrounding that, check for mold. I know for me during this wet season right now, it has been really bad. My first year, I only had mold issues really in my bathroom. I did have them in my living room and my office that I'm in right now, but then I got humidifiers and I got the tabs and then that really calmed it down. I didn't have any more issues, but because of the rainy season this year has been like really, really bad. Mold has like come in places I hadn't seen before, like my bedroom, by the window, definitely my bathroom double time, my office now, by this window on the floor, uh, in the living room, even with the tabs, it's just not keeping up with the mold. For me, I combat that by cleaning it really good and then spraying bleach and then wiping it really good. And it does a good job, but you have to do it more repetitively. What I do when I visit a, a apartment, you know, or flat as they call it here, I actually take a video and I also take pictures of things that were important or things I just didn't like. Uh, some people have really good memory, but for me, I don't. And sometimes it's a good, you know, you can compare it, you know, watch different videos and everything and say, oh, okay, I like this space because it had big windows or I like this space because, you know, the kitchen was nice, you know, so definitely take videos, take pictures if you must, just so you can have a visual reminder of why you liked or disliked a place. All right, going back to opening up the windows. In the summertime, I will say I did not have to run my AC once. I do have AC in all the rooms except for the kitchen and except for the dining room, but I have a ton of windows. And because I live like on a corner, I have both both sides. So I have like a T, so I have windows that can cross breeze and everything throughout the house. So definitely check to see if there's a breeze coming in or there's enough airflow. Especially if you do not have AC units in that flat, it might be really hot for you especially during the summer if it's really hot. When you finally found a place and you're happy with it, make sure your lease is registered. Make sure that apartment is registered, definitely, because I'm finding now with the requirements for D7 visas, they want the lease to actually be registered. And what I'm hearing is that sometimes landlords just don't want to register it, maybe because they're doing some under the table type activities, I don't know. When I moved in, my apartment was renovated. So that gave certain amount of days that it had to be registered with the finance office. And then within that time frame, my lease was registered. So definitely keep that in mind, especially if you are using this lease for your D7 or whatever visa that you're trying to get. Another thing that's important, I have heard that some people have in their contracts that their rent will not be increased. I have seen where some people have said that their rent was increased. It's definitely something to talk to your landlord about if they are planning on increasing the rent over time based off like the government percentages or if your one flat is just your one flat. Now this one has been like an issue this year. Last year, I remember hearing about like the flooding, but because we had a really bad rainy season and it's even raining today, ask, if your flat that you're looking at, apartment, is a, in a flood zone. I don't know if you have seen the videos recently of Lisbon underwater. 
and a lot of people, you know, businesses have been severely affected by it because their apartment was in a flood zone. So definitely ask about that. From what I'm seeing, it's any um, of the areas that are below the hills and not on top of the hills. So definitely keep that in mind when looking for a flat. So once your lease is ready, have someone that understands Portuguese leases and really don't and really don't just rely on the English translation. Um, the reason why I say that is because if you have noticed, if you ever tried to translate words, especially from Portuguese to English, sometimes it doesn't translate the best way it can. So in our American minds, it means, oh, this is what this means. But in Portuguese, it might mean something totally different. For me, my realtor spoke English uh, and he spoke Portuguese. So he went line by line and explained everything to me and, you know, pointed out the major things. So I did get a lease in English. I got a lease in uh, Portuguese. And so far, I have not had any issues. Forgot to add, ask who is responsible for repairs, you know, leaks, plumbing, anything like that. Ask, 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 because it might be that your landlord is going to cover all that or they may not cover all that. It might be up to you. So leading into that, it's a good idea to get renter's insurance. I have USAA renter's insurance. However, mine normally just covers valuables. You can get repair insurance and you can get that through your utility company. There's GALP, there's ADP. I'm not sure about the other ones that are out there. So with that being said, I really hope these tips have helped you. I know this video was like kind of short. I kind of wanted to get straight to the point, especially since there's a ton of people coming to Portugal right now. So I hope to catch you guys on the next video. I do have a few other Portugal ones that I'm working on right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.